This is the UCL, the biggest trophy in club football, won by managers such as Carlos Ancelotti and Pep Guardiola. And this is me, a 21-year-old manager who just got a job at Southbridge City. And to make things even worse, I am younger than the entire team and they just won't listen to me. But I'm not ready to give up on my dream as I'm going to work my butt off to become the world's best manager and win the Champions League. This is Arsene Wenger, arguably one of the greatest managers of all time, managing the likes of AS Monaco and even Arsenal where he went undefeated for an entire season. That's a manager I look up to and I want to be like one day. The problem is he doesn't even know me so I had to sneak into his office because I'm looking for some advice from the greatest manager of all time. Who the hell are you and why are you here? I'm a huge fan. I'm, I'm sorry for sneaking in here but I need some advice. I just became the youngest manager in football history and no one respects me. I need your help. Ah, uh, I see you're the new Salford manager. Uh, what makes you think you can just break into my office? You are my idol and I want to be the best manager in the world. Please, Wenger, just help me out. Fine, but if you do become a great manager, you have to promise me you will win the UCL for Arsenal. Deal. Well, the team doesn't respect you. Not much you can do but command them. However, I do suggest signing a younger player and making him captain. That will stir up the dressing room enough to show you're not messing around. Thank you, but how do I become the greatest manager in the world? Your first task is to overachieve by promoting Salford. Do that and maybe you can reach your goals. And my favorite manager has given me advice and a goal as well to promote with Salford City. But it's going to be difficult because this team is absolutely utter shit and they don't even listen to me. And the first thing I'm going to do is change to my preferred formation of a 4-3-3 with a cam up top. But I think Arsene Wenger was right. If I want this locker room to listen to me, I have to sign a brand new player, someone that is younger than me, and embarrass the entire team. But I only have 4 million. If you want to become the world's greatest manager one day, subscribe right now. And with that 4 million, I went ahead and got three offers accepted. One from the Tottenham manager, one from the Chelsea manager, and one from the Sunderland manager. But I have to pick one. And the first player is Dane Scarlett, a striker, a young striker from Tottenham Hotspur. He can score many goals with us. But typically the leaders are in the back and the other offer was for Alfie Gilchrist, a young center back from Chelsea. But I think my favorite pick and the player I think I'm going to decide is the younger brother of Jude Bellingham, Joe Bellingham. He has agreed to come to Salford City. I think I'm going to go for Joe Bellingham because he's in the middle of the pitch and he can lead both the top and the back. So we have signed Joe Bellingham for a steal of 4 million. And I think this is the greatest signing that Southport has ever made and my first ever signing. I hope that he can help me gain respect from his team and help this team promote so I can eventually become the world's greatest manager. So I quickly went ahead and made Joe Bellingham cam and gave him the captain's armband. But it seems like the squad just got even less happy. Hopefully that I can show to them and I can prove to them that Joe Bellingham is the right captain and we're going to promote this season. But I just need time to gain their respect. It was now time for my first game as a manager against Forest Green Rovers. I hope that even though that my teammates mad at me, they still give me their best and more importantly, they help Joe Bellingham win this game because I know Joe is the best player in this team and he's going to lead them. I just hope they can listen to him. And here comes the first attack of my manager career. Joe Bellingham is making a run but Colin Morton does not pass it to him. He gets rid of the defender, has a shot and it's saved by the keeper. Why is he not passing to Joe? And here we go once again, we're on the attack, it's Southward City, it's given to Colin Morton, he sees Joe Bellingham but he ignores him again, and it's a shot. Are, they, are my team ignoring my captain? Is that what's happening right now? And they can't ignore Bellingham now, as he is taking the corner, his first touch for Southward City, it's a cross in, into Maria, and it goes in. The first touch that Bellingham gets, he turns it into an assist. There's no way this team could continue to ignore Bellingham after he produced a goal in his first touch. Let's go Bellingham. And here we come pressuring Forest Green Rovers looking to make it 2-0. No, Connor McElhaney with the ball back. He sees Joe, but he ignores him and loses the ball. Really? You're going to ignore him and you're going to lose the ball instead? But here comes Joe Bellingham looking to win the ball back himself. He wins it back. He loses it, but he wins it back once again. He's pushing through even though they don't pass on the ball. It's still Joe with a shot and it goes in. Bellingham is showing the team why he's the captain, why I gave him that armband, even though he hasn't touched the ball at all this game. Two touches, an assist, and a goal for Bellingham. This team needs to come around and listen to me. And the game comes to an end, I shake hands with the manager, I get my first ever victory. But I'm very unhappy with the performance today. We may have won 2-0, but they're nearly ignoring the captain of the club. 
but I'm not ready to give up just yet. Joe Bellingham showed why he should be given the ball and why he should lead this team. It's only a matter of time when this team comes around. But that time was not right now as the team continued to disobey me and not pass the ball to Joe Bellingham. But regardless, in those touches that he did get, he got assists and even some goals. Things just weren't looking good as we're sitting 17th place in the first six games and my manager rating was getting lower and lower. I'm in the brink of getting sacked already. And it's getting worse as up next we're facing Warsaw, the first place team. My dreams are so close to coming over. But I need something to happen in this game. My job is at risk and I could potentially get sacked if we continue to lose. I need something to happen. I need my team to listen to me. And here comes Joe Bellingham with the first attack of the game. He won the ball back himself and now he's taking it past every defender. He has a shot and it goes in. Joe Bellingham is a special player. The team refuses to play with him, but somehow he still puts up numbers. And Joe wins the ball back and now he's looking to get another goal here. He turns, he's looking for some space. He doesn't see anybody open. He has a shot. And it's going to be a handball, our first penalty of the season. Of course, Job is taking corners, free kicks, and penalties because he's the best player on the pitch. He's going to get his second goal. But it seems like Joe Bellingham has given his penalty away to a teammate. Elliot Watt is going to go ahead to get his first goal of the season. He shoots it and it goes in. We take the 2-0 lead. Job is trying to convince these players to follow him and give him a chance. And here we come once again on another tag. It's given to Elliot Watt and he gives it to Joe Bellingham with a shot. And it goes in. I don't even care that we scored. Somebody has finally passed the ball and it was what? He gives it to Bellingham, he gets in second. This game is over, we have upset in Warsaw, the first place team. Our thing is going to change now. He finally got a ball from his teammate. But it doesn't matter, this game is over. And straight after that victory, Elliot Walk came into my office and basically apologized for being ignorant and is ready to play as a team. But this just wasn't a one-time thing. As for the next couple of weeks, multiple players were coming to my office apologizing as we started to dominate League 2, winning game after game. But as we reached the end of the season, we just missed out on automatic promotion as the team happiness was all the way up and even my manager rating was all the way to the top. We were now in the promotion playoff final against Grimsby Town. A couple months ago, Arsene Wenger said if I want to become the best manager in the world, I have to do some hard things like promoting with Southbridge City. Let's make him proud tonight. But it was now time for the moment of truth. The best managers in the world win their cup finals. They promote their teams. Can I join that list and promote Southbridge City? I've heard that there's a couple clubs interested in me next season. But I hope I can do Southbridge glory here and send them to the next league. And now it's Hendry on the ball, a through ball, into Joe Bellingham, I love seeing the play as a team, it's a shot and it just goes wide, this close to taking the lead. And here we go on the attack once again, he sees Joe Bellingham with a brilliant through ball, he gets rid of the defenders, 1v1 with a shot and it's a banger, he did not have to shoot that, but he puts it away and we take a 1-0 lead in this final. And that's it, one goal in this game, the most boring game you would have ever seen, and we have won and we are lifting the playoff trophy and we are promoted southward to League One. The question is, am I gonna stay here? I've been through such a journey here. Nobody listened to me, now they all love me. Or am I gonna go ahead and accept one of the couple offers that I've received? One from Leicester City and one from Leeds United. Both of these teams last season promoted to the Premier League and they will be playing Premier League football. And I think after a lot of thought, I have chosen Leeds United. And there I go, I've become the Leeds United manager where the likes of Jesse Marsh, Sam Allardyce and even Marcelo Bielsa has managed. I'll be lucky and blessed enough to even do a, sim a similar of that job. But as I signed for Leeds United, Leicester went ahead and got Wayne Rooney as their manager. And as I joined Leeds United, this is the team that we're starting with. I think it's a pretty decent team, but it needs a lot of work if we want to do well in the prep. And with the 77 million, I have a lot of signings to make, but I know who I have to go for first. And that is Joe Bellingham, no! He has joined Leicester City, the team that Wayne Rooney joined. And there it is confirmed, Wayne Rooney has stole my player. I don't like this man. He stole the guy who helped me start my managerial career. So I went ahead and brushed off the Joe Bellingham transfer and made transfers of my own, bringing in Eddie and Ketia and Romeo Lavia and added them to the team. And I even have 22 million left just in case I need some in January. But I went ahead and snuck into Arsene Wenger's office once again. Uh, it's you again. What do you want? I came for my next objective. Objective? I'm not your boss. 
you were the world's best manager at one point. What should I aim for next? Well, you've got the worst team in the league. Focus on keeping them up in the Premier League. I got it. So it's time for my Premier League debut as a manager. My debut for Leeds United against Man City. It's going to be a tough game. But Arsene Wenger generally believes that we have the lowest ranked team in the league. I need to make sure that I listen to him and I keep this team from relegating to the championship. Here we come, the first attack of the game. The captain, Mark Rocco, sends a through ball into Eddie Getia. The new signing has a shot and it goes in. The player I signed from Arsenal has made it 1 0. Can we actually upset the best team in the Premier League? But here come Man City, pressure on their own. Here comes Savio, he wins the ball back. Savio with the crossing into Erling Haaland with a bullet header and it goes in. Quickly, Man City equalized the game. But Man City have a corner, Phil Foden takes it and lands to KDB, he lays it off into Jeremy Doku with a shot and it goes in. City take the lead. And that was all she wrote. I shake hands with the best manager in the world as we lose 2-1. It looks like this season is going to be my first ever tough season. I just hope that I can survive relegation. And it seems like I was right as for the rest of the season, we really struggled to get consistent victories, just getting consistent losses. And on the final day of the season, we were in the relegation zone. And the same amount of points at Leicester City, who will be facing on the final day. With the winner staying in the Premier League and the loser going back down to the championship. And it seems like Wayne Rooney, the new Leicester manager who stole Joe Bellingham for us, is taking a press conference. Do I think we'll beat Leeds and stay up? Of course I will. Edgar is just 22. It's a joke that he's a manager. The players at Salford didn't even respect him. He's ruining the game. I've worked hard as a manager, and he's at the same level as me. Ridiculous. I'll expose him tonight with the player who got him that Leeds job. Why, Rooney? Why do you hate me like this? I feel like I'm in a career mode story video. But regardless, I will survive relegation with Leeds. But it was now a time, do or die. If I lose this game, I'll be going down to the championship. That's if I even survive the sacking as my manager rating is at an all time low. I need to survive relegation. The greatest managers in the world would now relegate down a division. I need to show Rooney who's boss. But he also has Job on the bench. He is incredibly stupid. Job should be starting. And now here comes Brendan Aronson on the ball with a through ball all the way into Eddie Aketia. Brings it down, has a shot, and it goes in. Eddie Aketia, our star striker, has made it 1 0. We're gonna stay in the Premier League. Here come Leicester City. It's it to Samari with a shot, and it's a great save by Meslier. But now we're trying to clear out the ball, but it's one again by Samari. He crosses it in into Sakai with a shot, and it goes in. Sakai makes it 1 1. If, the, if we do draw, Leicester do go and stay up as they do have more goals than us. We need to win this game. And here comes Romero Lavia in the second half with a through ball to the other brand new signing. Eddie Ketia chest it down, has a shot, and it goes in. Eddie Ketia makes it 2-1. We're taking the lead. We're going to stay in the division. Please, let's not concede another. And it seems like when Rooney made a smart decision, Joe Bellingham is coming on. We know how dangerous he is. We need to make sure that he gets locked down. It's the 80th minute. Leicester have a corner. Joe Bellingham with a brilliant cross into Wolf Base. And they've scored in the 88th minute. It's 2-2. If the score is still like this, we're going down back to the championship. Joe Bellingham, the player that we created, the player, our old captain, the man who helped us in our career, he's going to be sending us down. But we have one last chance, one last corner in the 90th minute. Can we stay up? Running Aronson with a cross into Robin Koch, and it goes in. Robin Koch has saved us. He has scored a winner. 3-2 against Leicester. That's what you get running for talking shit for no reason. I had nothing against you. We're staying in the Premier League. We have done it. Joe Bellingham, I'm sorry, but we're sending you down. But we have won this game. And the ref blows the whistle. We have survived relegation. The second objective, the second goal that Wenger told us to do to make sure we don't relegate down because great managers don't. We have completed it. And it's all thanks to Eddie Ketia and the entire team. We have done well this season. And after surviving relegation, we go into the brand new season where we speak with Arsene Wenger once again. Congrats on surviving in the Premier League, Edgar. I assume you want another task. Staying at Leeds won't make you the best manager in the world. This season, impress the world by qualifying for a European competition or even better, winning a trophy. Got it. 
I will do it. And it seems like Wenger said that we need to impress World Football by either qualifying for any European competition or more importantly winning a trophy with this shit, Leeds United side. But with 121 million, I have a lot of money to improve this team. And to improve this team, I went ahead and made a couple of signings bringing in Dean Henderson, Ian Madsen, Callum Hudson-Odoi, and because Wayne Rooney left Leicester City and has joined Fiorentina, I went ahead and because we had no money, got Joe Bellingham on a one-year loan. And taking a look at this side, this side is definitely good enough to either qualify for any European football or maybe even win a trophy. And aim to impress the world, I did as we went on a fantasy Carabao Cup run and we were now in the final against Liverpool. But not only that, if we lose, we're sitting in 6th place 25 games in, meaning we're on a good pace to impress. And the Carabao Cup final kicks off. If I can win this, I can impress the big clubs like my United and Chelsea. But it's a through ball from Agatha to Joe Bellingham with a shot and it goes in from outside the box. Our loan signing, our first ever signing has come to Leeds United and has made it 1-0. Are we gonna upset Liverpool? But now it's Joel Bellingham, he wins the ball back and now it's Enoto back into Job. Job with the through ball into Enriquetia. Can we make it 2-0 in this first half and it goes in? We're taking a 2-0 lead in the Carabao Cup final. I'm the first time I'm asking, are we really gonna win our first trophy? And Cody Gakpo wins the ball back. Liverpool are trying to get a goal right before halftime. Mo Salah with a finesse shot and it goes in top corner. If you give Salah that space, he's gonna put it away. And now Liverpool have a free kick in the second half. Looking to make it 2-2. Alexis McAllister steps up and takes it and it goes in. It's a brilliant free kick. And the game, the Carabao Cup is up for grabs. How did we blow a 2-0 lead? Now it's Robin Koch with a terrible pass. He gives it away. It's Cody Gakpo with a cross into Mohamed Salah with the header and it goes in. Liverpool take a 3-2 lead just two minutes after scoring the equalizer. There's only about 20 minutes left to go. How did we let this happen? How were we blowing this lead? We're looking like Tottenham. But we have a corner in the 87th minute. Joe Bellingham is set to take it. He crosses it in into Junior Firpo. Yes, we have scored. Junior Firpo has come in for a suspended Madsen. And he has scored an equalizer. We're going to extra time. We're possibly going to penalties. There's still a chance we win this game. If we defend this corner, we go to extra time. Trent Alexander-Arnold with a cross into Joe Gomez and it's a brilliant bicycle kick. You cannot do anything against that. It's just brilliant from Liverpool today. We weren't good enough. They take the fourth lead. This game is over. We have missed out on the Carabao Cup. But it is confirmed. Liverpool lift the Carabao Cup. We could have impressed the big teams. Even though from brilliance from Job and Enketia, who's been amazing so far, Liverpool were just too good today. And after losing to Liverpool in the Carabao Cup final, we remain strong. And on the final day of the season, we were sitting in sixth place, only two points ahead of Spurs, who were facing on the final day. If we finish in sixth place, we get European football in Conference League. But if we lose, we still have an opportunity as somehow we reached another final and it's against Spurs again. There's no way we can let him win the first trophy regardless whether we finish 6 or not. And Spurs clear out the ball, but Callum hudson Odoi picks up the ball, he has a shot, and it goes in, far in. The greatest goal that has ever happened as me as manager, Callum hudson Odoi has been an amazing signing. And Gethia, Job, and Callum hudson Odoi. I know what I'm doing as a manager. And here we come pressure right before halftime, Romeo Lavia wins the ball back, he wants to go of his own, has a rip, and it goes in. The CDM is out here scoring goals. The signings I've made have been absolutely sensational. That's why we took Leeds United from relegation battlers to possibly Conference League comp comp competitors. We have a whole half left. Let's finish this game off. And now it's Kulisevsky in the second half. Here comes Tana Hotspur. Not looking to give up just yet. Petro Poro into Lukman who lays it off. Lukman with a shot and it's a banger. Dean Henderson has had an amazing season, but you cannot save that shot. It's 2-1. And here comes Lukman looking for a second goal here. He cuts inside, he gets rid of all the defenders, has a shot, and it goes in. The defense has been horrible in this game. Same as the Liverpool game. Please, let's not bottle this. And here comes Adam Lukman. He takes the ball off. Eden Abudu is 1v1 against the keeper. He has all the space in the world. Cuts inside, has a finesse shot, and he makes it. It's a ridiculous goal, a ridiculous performance. A one-man team and Tottenham have taken the lead. There's 30 minutes left, there's 20 minutes left. Please, let's do something. And the whistle has been blown. A one-man team had him on a look, man. Just like he did in the Europa League final a couple years ago. We have one last chance to impress the world. And it's a cup final against Spurs. Please, 
let's now be the reason why Spurs win their first trophy. One last chance to impress the big clubs of world football. This is a make or break moment of my career. This could completely kill my momentum or take me to the very top to the world's best manager. But we're up against Tottenham. Please, let's not embarrass ourselves in the biggest stage. And here we go, the first attack of the game of the FA Cup Finals. A through ball into Joe Bellingham. He's all by himself. Is anybody going to help him? He gets inside, gets rid of both defenders, has a finesse, and it goes in when we need him most. My first ever signing. He's only here on loan. He makes it 1 0. We take the lead, but we've bottled the Carabao Cup Final and the last day of the season. Please, let's not bottle this. But here come Tottenham Hotspur as Bissouma into Kulisevsky, into Armando Lugman, takes the touch, has a shot, and it's a great save from Dean Henderson. But they have a backup shot, Garnacho, and it hits both posts, and we clear it out. We get so lucky. But here comes Armando Lugman, loses the ball, but wins it back, and now it's Kulisevsky into Armando Lugman with a shot, and Dean Henderson makes another save. And here comes Petro Perl, once again Spurs dominating in this game. Into Armando Lugman, lays it off, and it's a shot, and it's saved by Dean Henderson. The game of his life he's having. And now Sadamano Lugman looking for another attack. He prays it all the way to the other side. It's the Ian Kulosevsky into James Madison. Takes a touch, has a shot. And Dean Henderson once again. What a great signing by me. But it's a brilliant save. It's the 88th minute. Tottenham win the ball back. They have one last attack. It's Alejandro Garnacho into Armando Lugman. He gets rid of Robert Cock. He gets rid of the goalkeeper. He has a shot, but Dean Henderson gets back. He makes a save. The team celebrates. That's like a 90th minute winner. We're gonna win this game. We're gonna win the FA Cup. Tottenham do have a corner. Kulisewski with the cross in, and it's won by the Leeds defense. Rev blow the whistle. But here comes Inoto. There's no goalkeeper. It's Ian Mudson. He sees an open goal. There's no keeper. Is he gonna put this away? But the final nail in the coffin. Ian Mudson with a shot, and it goes in. We have won the game in dramatic fashion. 2-0. Tottenham had one last chance. But he, Ian Matsy ran the whole length of the pitch to score a goal. We're winning that FA Cup. The referee blows his whistle. We left the FA Cup. We're FA Cup champions. We have done what Wenger told us to do, at least one of the things. Even then, we also qualified for the Europa League because of this FA Cup win. There has to be many offers coming in for me next season because I want to win a major trophy. I want to win a league title, whether it's in England or somewhere else. And at the start of the brand new season, I got one offer and one offer only, and that is AC Milan. I'm accepting that. I could win the league title over there, and I could win the UC over there and become the world's best manager. And I have joined AC Milan with the great Carlo Ancelotti used to manage. I have a lot of expectations here as I walk in to Arsene Wenger's office. And Arsene Wenger tells me it's simple where your next goal is. It's to win the league title with AC Milan. And I'm pretty sure Arsenal, the club that you promised me you'd go to, will come in for you. And of course, I say, I got this boss. I will win the league title. But taking a look at this AC Milan squad, it's not going to be easy. This team is not the best like it was before having the likes of Kaka and so much more. But we do have a lot of young players and 129 million to spend. But I know that Wayne Rooney has been dominating with Fiorentina here in the Serie A. And quickly, I went into the Leicester manager's office and agreed a deal on Joe Bellingham. And that's when I met him for his contract. But he had some words to say. Hey Edgar, I'm glad you came in for me, but I want to be honest, I want to stay in England. My brother Jude has joined Chelsea and I hope to join him soon. No worries, Job. I understand. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Without you, my managerial dream would have been over. Yeah, no problem. You've helped a lot. If you're ever back in England, you should manage Chelsea. I have a promise to uphold, but good luck. So Job decided to join Chelsea alongside his brother while I wasted all of my money on Jeremy Frimpong and a random Portuguese striker region who was playing in Saudi Arabia. But on another note, thankfully I left Leeds United because it seems like Chelsea went on another spending spree and literally signed every single player that I signed to that club. So I add the new signings to the starting 11 and the bench, but it was time for my Serie A debut, my debut for AC Milan as the manager. And it's going to be in the Milan Derby. If I want to win the league title and beat out the clubs such as Juventus, Napoli, Inter, and even Wayne Rooney's Fiorentina, I have to go ahead and prove myself in this first Milan Derby. And that is great defending from Kalulu. He's trying to clear out the ball, but Turan wins it back into Lotaro with a chip, and it goes in. Chetaro Martinez scores a goal. How are we letting this bomb score against us? We go 1-0 down. 
on our debut. Inter Milan looking to make it 2-0. Chalahanglu with a cross from the corner. It's cleared away. Can we start a counterattack? Rafael Guerrero picks up the ball with a finesse shot. And it's a finger. Guerrero makes it 2-0. I cannot get absolutely destroyed on my first game at AC Milan. I need to be beating teams like this if I want to win the league title. The second half has kicked off. Ivan Tony hasn't done anything. So I'm bringing on this random Portuguese striker that I found from Saudi Arabia, Medeiros. Hopefully he can pull out something. He seems to be pretty decent. But here comes the first attack of the second half. Ben Hassan into Christian Pulisic, into Jeremy Frimpong, through ball into Medeiros, the young 16-year-old from Portugal, and then goes in. He makes it 2-1. He picks up the ball. This game is not over. How is a 16-year-old leading the line right now? And Jeremy Frimpong wins the ball back. He gives it to Medeiros, into the Catalari. Catalari into Christian Pulisic. Come on, we're on the attack. There's no defenders. It's crossing to Medeiros with a shot, and it goes in. That is a beautiful first time finish. How are you doing that at 16 years old? He has to be sometime special talent. We make it 2-2. Let's win on our debut. It's the last minute of the game. There's no way we're going to score. And then that is minute once again. It's Pablo Barrios through ball into the captain. An inspired run from the captain. It's a cross in. Into Medeiros with a shot. And it goes in. The blood armor is crazy on this team. Medeiros, the 60-year-old, on his first game in the Serie A, gets a hat trick. He reminds me of someone, I just don't know who. 3-2, we're winning on our debut. Let's go. And our debut is over. And because of that hat trick, I threw Medeiros straight in the lineup and it was the correct decision. As for the next couple games, we picked up victory after victory and he scored goal after goal. And we were now sitting in third place after five games. But up next, we have first place Fiorentina. Wayne Rooney's Fiorentina who are undefeated. This is going to be difficult. I hope I can get my payback on Wayne Rooney. And the ball falls on Medeiros. Yes, a shot for the first attack of the game and it's blocked. And now the Catalari lays it up to Medeiros once again with a shot off the bar and it goes in. A screamer. This 16 year old is just scoring so many good goals at such a young age. He's probably the best player I've signed so far. We take a 1-0 lead against Wayne Rooney. But this game has been boring. It is now the 85th minute. Fiorentina are still looking for a draw here. As Nico Gonzalez with a shot and it goes in. Wayne Rooney has equalized the game. There's five minutes left to go. But come on, we should have scored more goals. As Fiorentina side has been impressive defensively. But my team is so much better. But it's now the 90th minute. Fiorentina have a corner. It's crossed in and it's crossed back in. And it's crossed back in into the middle with a header. Oh, donkey high. He puts it away, the German center back makes it 2-1. I bottled it, we bottled it. Wayne Rooney has beaten me. We have the better team, we are the favorites. But Wayne Rooney, I have to say, he's a great manager. He's beaten my super team. We just lost to Fiorentina. And the game comes to an end, and Wayne Rooney approaches me. Wow, you can't even hold a lead. I'm 10x the better manager than you. You're a cancer to management. A kid with a hoodie will never beat me. That league title is mine. Wow, he's right. No wonder people didn't listen to me at Salford. But I can't change now. I've gone in here being myself and doing things my way. I will win that league title. And after that loss, we reached the end of the season where sadly we got grouped in the UCL. But on the last day of the season, we're sitting in first place with 99 points, two points ahead of Fiorentina who haven't lost all season, who will be facing on the final day with the winner winning the league title. But remember, one of the only teams that have beaten me this season is Wayne Rooney's Fiorentina. Can I go ahead and win the league title? And the final day battle kicks off. Nico Gonzalez has a free kick for the first attack of the game. He steps up, has a shot, and it goes in. Nico Gonzalez makes it 1-0. Come on, we can't let Wayne Rooney win the league title. But we're not ready to give up just yet. Isaac Benacer into Okafor. And he has a space. He has a cross in. Into Medeiros with a shot. And it goes in. We have a classic Argentino versus Portuguese attacker here. 1-1. One, one. Win, Rudy. You're not winning that title. And right before halftime, here it comes once again. Leal into Medeiros. Into Okafor. Back into Medeiros with a volley. And it goes in. 2-1. We have turned it around in the first half. It's about to be halftime. But we're winning the league title. And Theo Hernandez wins the ball back, but he loses it. And now it's Nico Gonzalez with a chip in the 80th minute, and it's gone in. Nothing we can do. The captain messes up. It's 2-2 with only a couple minutes to go. We need to win this game. We need to secure this victory. 
One last attack. The last kick of the game is coming. We have one last attack. It's Rafael Leao. It's Tio Hernandez, the captain. He lifts it up. He has a shot. And it goes in. The best goal you ever see this season. The best goal of the entire season. The last goal of this season. We're going to win the league title. We only really talk so much shit. Oh, my management was just enough. And surely, we've won this game. And yes, it is confirmed. Theo Hernandez has redeemed himself a 90th minute winner. And we lift the Serie A title. I complete what Arsene Wenger said I should do. I could only imagine what the last goal is. But we celebrate this league win. When Rooney has to shut his mouth. And the brand new season kicks off off of winning the league title. I speak to Arsene Wenger. Welcome, Mr. Salinas. Uh, I have some good news. Well, Mr. Salinas, I guess I've gained your respect. Yes, you have. Arsenal wants you as manager. All you have to do is reject your other offer from Chelsea. Chelsea came in for me? Yes, but you know what to do. So the time has come. I have promised Arsene Wenger that I would join Arsenal, but Chelsea have come in. I know I made a promise, but Chelsea do have the best players I've ever managed. Joe Bellingham, Ian Madsen, Romeo Lavia, and so much more. They even have Joe Bellingham. This is a tough decision. I know Wenger has helped me out, but a good manager would notice the opportunity of managing the best ever players he's ever had. And after a lot of thought, I've decided to accept the Chelsea offer. And there it is. I don't know if I made a mistake. I've joined Chelsea. I'm sure somewhere Arsene Wenger is extremely mad at me. But I can see the opportunity here. The best players I've ever managed. If I'm going to win a UCL, it's going to be here because that is my last goal to become the world's greatest manager. And of course, as I joined Chelsea, Arsenal bringing a new manager and that is Wayne Rooney. The rivalry is real lit over here in the Premier League. But how can I say no to this Chelsea team? Eddie Nketiah, the best striker possibly I've ever signed. Alton Odoi, Ian Madsen, a great left side. And even Joe Bellingham, my first ever signing. Plus additions of Cole Palmer and Reese James. Don't you worry, these three shit guys will not be playing in my team. But with 161 million, I know exactly who I'm going to bring in. And no, he's been stolen by Rain Rooney. Medeiros has joined Arsenal. Probably the biggest talent I've ever had in a squad. He's gone. So instead, I went ahead and signed two of my best AC Milan players in Papaya Tomori and Kalulu in the center back positions as I added them to the lineup and made Joe Bellingham the captain of the team. This team has to win the UCL. And win the UCL is exactly what we're about to do as we dominated in the group stages, finishing in first place. We're also going all the way to the final where, of course, it's a London derby against Arsenal, against Wayne Rooney. But it's not going to be easy as Wayne Rooney himself beat my old team AC Milan. But I do have a squad full of the best players I've ever managed, plus Jude Bellingham and Palmer. But because Madsen has a red card, shit guy Kukurella has to come in. I hope this is a mistake, but we have to win the UCL to become the world's greatest manager. But it was now time for the UCL final against my arch rival, a man I had so much respect for. Then he took a press conference a long time ago and said, I don't deserve to be a manager. He then took Joe Bellingham away from me and took Medeiros away from me and called me an insult of a manager. But now it's time to get my ultimate payback. If I win this game, I'll become the world's greatest manager. But if Rooney does it, he'll become the world's greatest manager. I hope I can do it. And Arsenal have the first attack of the game. It's a corner. Declan Rice into Medeiros with a shot. And it's going to be a handball. Kalulu. Concedes a handball and it's going to be a penalty. Arsenal have the ultimate opportunity to take the lead. And now Medeiros is taking the penalty. I have nothing against him. He just chose Arsenal, but I hope he turns it to Joel Felix today as he shoots it and it goes in. Medeiros makes it 1-0 to Arsenal. He's not missing that. But here we come on our first attack. It's Callum Hudson Odoi. He's it to Joe Bellingham, the captain. Back into Hudson Odoi. It's Enketia. Links up with Joe Bellingham with a finesse shot from Hudson. The box and it goes in. My first ever signing, my captain, everywhere I've been to, makes it 1-1. What a signing and what a player he has become. Maybe because of him, will become the world's greatest manager. But it's 1-1 for now. And now Zanketia into Cole Palmer, back into Joe Bellingham, the captain with a through ball into Cole Palmer. But Kyle Flory clears it out, but Palmer with a bicycle kick and it goes in. 
Woods, he was a one-man team carrying the shit Chelsea side. And he finally has a good team around him. And he continues his form. He makes it 2-1. We take the lead in this first half. Well, here come Arsenal right before halftime. It's Bukayo Saka looking to outpace Tomori. It's a crossing into Medeiros with a shot. And Arsenal have made it 2-2. They finally found their striker after playing Kai Havertz for years up top. Medeiros should have been there earlier. But maybe I could have had him if I would have signed him quicker. Or if I would have joined Arsenal. He's a problem today. It's 2-2. We're going into the second half, drawing with Arsenal, with momentum. But straight from kickoff, here comes Medeiros. He gets rid of more Malavia. He gets rid of Kalulu. It's still Medeiros. He gets rid of Kalulu once again. And it's still Medeiros. He has a shot. And it's blocked by Kalulu. And now it's Saka. It's Medeiros with a shot again. And it goes in. A hat trick from this 17-year-old Portuguese wonder kid. We're possibly playing against the world's greatest player of all time. How are we going to beat Arsenal? How are we going to be Wayne Rooney? When the best ever player, the best player in the world probably, is on the other team. But we're not ready to give up. It's Cole Palmer on the ball. Sends it all the way across to Callum hudson -Odoi. Takes a touch. And it's to Callum hudson -Odoi. Crossing into Eddie and get there with a shot. And it goes in. Rejected and ignored by Arsenal for years. He comes back against them in their first possible ever UCL win. And he scores to make it 3-3. This is what being a manager is all about. Seeing all of your signings, all of your players succeeding. Come on one goal and we'll be UCL winners and we'll be the greatest manager in the world. And we have one last quarter before extra time. If we don't put it away, it's Joe Bellingham. It's crossed in and it's crossed back into Reese. Reese into Jude. Jude back into Reese. Reese. It stops the ball. Crosses it back in into Gumbo there with a bicycle kick. What a goal pass. The best UCL final you will ever see. Cobham Academy graduate to the other. This is what being a Chelsea player is all about. We have won the game, surely. Callum hudson Odoi, he's been very, very consistent throughout his entire career and surely has scored the most important goal in his history. And the ref blows the whistle. We have done it. The most unexpected player to score. Callum hudson Odoi has become the hero and we lift the UCL trophy and we have become the world's greatest manager. If you guys enjoyed this video, then make sure to click on this video right here because you're going to enjoy it.